Welcome back, old people. It's another Tabletop Tuesday. This is the uh, seventh week in a row that we've been managed. We've managed to be able to do this, and uh, it's it's really nice to see all of you again. Seven. Seven. Lucky number seven. seven. Lucky number seven. seven. <laughs> For those of you who didn't understand that reference, you should really go check out the <laughs> Chaos Gate <laughs> playlist uh, and listen to the Plague Bearers calling out the numbers. Good plug, which I didn't even know what that meant until you told me. That... As, as just a little bit of lore mastering yeah. there, mm -hmm. the did, so. plague bearers like to count off the number of Nurgle followers that are in the area. Uh, this was played out really nicely in the uh, the first novelization of uh, uh, when when 8th edition came out. I forgot the name. Dark Imperium. Mm. Dark Imperium was the book, and it was a really neat, a really neat device that was used in that. And then it carried over into the Chaos Gate games. And uh, already, already, we are being a wicked awesome lore channel right now. And more people <laughs> should be subscribing for this kind of information. Uh, before we get too far into anything, Dan... What is your beverage of choice today? I went back and watched oh. a bunch of season one and forgot that we used to do this far more like regularly and, and with more structure. And uh -huh. it's, I think it's time to bring that back. I well, I think, bring that back. I think this show, the way you have restructured it, has much more structure. Well, the but, drinking part was but just we didn't, completely we didn't dropped. Drinking part. Well, that's because yeah. somebody complained. Somebody said they didn't like that part of it. So we, he's uh, a member of the channel, so we don't really need to take his advice yeah, into consideration. True. So yeah. overruled. That's um, right. I'm having an eggnog. Oh, a really big, really big eggnog. <laughs> My wife loves making eggnog for me. So nice. anytime, anytime she hears me rummaging in the cabinets, she comes sprinting out of whatever room she's in and, and takes over and makes the eggnog for me. So that's actually pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Uh, all yep. that looks like to me is yep. lactose intolerance in a glass. You probably shouldn't have any then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have that problem yet. So I'm going to enjoy it while I can until my body rebels. Uh, I technically am not lactose have? intolerant. Uh, I just, uh, I just terrified. I'm just terrified of that much eggnog. You can't, you can't live your life in fear, Curtis. That's fair. What's the point of living if you're in, live in fear? I don't disagree with anything you're saying, and I was trying to find a fun way to transition to the fact that I'm drinking Slayer today. Ah, nice. Slayer is a seasonal beer from the Ninkasi Brewing Company here in Oregon. Uh -huh. uh, as longtime viewers may remember, I love their beers. I love their beers so much, and... A favorite of mine, and it turns out not just mine, but like the guy who owns the bistro down the street and uh, some of our old neighbors and a bunch of people that I randomly found on the internet. We all really enjoyed Pacific Rain, which was a uh, yes. a beer that they had for a really long time. And they're not producing anymore right now. Oh, no. And we're trying to find out why. What? Uh, Sam, who owns Samo's Bistro down the street, has been in contact with his rep to be like, where's the Pacific Rain? And they're like, we don't have any in the warehouse. And it's like, that's not an answer, man. That's not an answer. <laughs> You're a brewery. And we need you to get brewing. So hashtag bring back Pacific Rain. Okay. That's, let's get that spreading on the old internets because <laughs> I want my favorite beer back. But anyway, yeah. this is all so good. What what? what what's in it what's what kind of a beer is it is it a stout is it an ale what are you drinking? it's a limited release it is a winter ale with roasty toffee malty notes roasty and that is accurate toffee malty notes correct okay. uh it's a 7.2 percent right. beer with 60 okay. ibus all right and uh yeah slayer winter ale nice and drinking it out of the bottle yeah you are you are a bottle beer consumer i don't think I've, i ever see you pour your beers into a glass the only time i'm gonna drink beer out of a glass is if it's in a ah, that's not only turns out i I'm, I'm only really picky if it comes in a can or i can get it on draft if it comes in if it already comes in glass i'm gonna drink it out of the bottle of glass it came in really okay yeah all right yeah yeah. Especially if it's like a really tall one. Like drink when I went to go find it, stuff for today's episode, uh -huh. I really wanted not a 40, but like 
one of those like uh, pint and a half bottles. Yes. Because they're just I I was looking for something winter related. So I figured there's got to be somebody who puts like a giant Santa Claus on the label of like a pint and a half bottle. Sure. I could not find one. Yeah. Probably sold They're out. All sold out, yeah. Yeah. Everybody everybody beat you to the punch. Yeah. So Dry. uh to to our faithful viewers out there, fellow old people, what are you consuming while you're watching this or working on your hobby stuff? Let us know in the comments because we have really enjoyed participating with you in the old comments. Um and other in other news, how was your week otherwise? Uh, yeah. mm. it was mm. a it was a, a challenging week this week mm. um didn't get a whole lot of progress done on most of the things that i wanted to get progress done on mm. i'm assuming that is not just hobby related that is also life related. not just hobby related yeah that's yeah. pretty much everything yeah okay yeah, i've been uh i i well yeah, we'll talk about it I'm sure. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, I just, yeah, no, I really want to establish this parasocial relationship with our audience as much as possible, make them feel like they're involved in our lives, uh, so that, uh, so that they have that, that addiction to want to watch. Um, mm. but, uh, yeah, I feel what you're saying. Um, this week feels like it's gone by really fast and mm -hmm. I feel like I, I, it feels like time is going by quicker than I can get things done. Yeah. And that's, yes. Yeah. I also had a, a shock this week. I've been spending the month editing the new episode of the Hero's Journey podcast. Mm. And I thought I was a week ahead. I, yeah, anyway. And then uh, uh, co-host Jeff said, oh, we're releasing this episode a week early so that it comes out before Christmas, which is something we've done every Christmas. We've always, regardless of our normal Tuesday, last Tuesday of the month release schedule for January through November, the December episode we always release the week before Christmas. Always. Is that is that next Tuesday when this and episode will release? Yes. <laughs> yes. So while when you're finished watching this episode, go to your podcast app and go to the Hero's Journey podcast and uh, and listen to Elf with me and Jeff. Nice. Anyhow, that was a surprise to me because I, I was just like, All right, I'm a week ahead. I'm already you know, it's 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 week one of post and I'm already done with act one and so i'm just like way ahead of schedule and then he's like oh yeah we're releasing a week early remember i was like oh crap so that's a part of the reason why i didn't get as much progress done on other things that i wanted to do because i was <laughs> yeah i noticed in the, the uh in the podcast. youtube studio that uh normally you are on the ball as far as like having videos in advance scheduled <laughs> <laughs> and there was stuff. nothing. And I went in to put I'm in like... Tuesday's episode and the shorts that are relaying on that. And uh, and I was like, ah, there's nothing else in here. <laughs> what, where, what's, where? To, what's tomorrow's video going to be? I got there. I did, you I did. Haven't missed a, I haven't missed a day. You have not. You have not. But it been, was a surprise. I've been skidding in sideways every day so far this week. <laughs> I'm turning red. I'm laughing so much. I do, just so that you can breathe, just so that you can breathe easy, I do have tomorrow and Friday's videos already up. Oh, excellent. Already up. So excellent. Vampire yeah. for the next two days is ready to go. Also, I'm really pleased to see that people have seemed to find Vampire because now we've got, we've got uh, mm -hmm. way more folks that are showing up for that. But I also, today's episode in particular... Um, and we're recording this on the 14th of December. So go back and, and watch that. Um, I have been waiting for that sewer fight for a week. <laughs> and so to finally see it, I had the same reaction you did when it was over because I was like, it feels like there should be more pomp and circumstance after that battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it was, he just, he just dropped and that was it. I was like, there's no cut scene or anything. Yeah. It was just like, okay, go keep going now. Yeah. What? But so I my, think you're right. The story was, yeah. was so delayed for that because I, I had, I, I don't know. I had built it up to such a thing. It took, it was a two episode battle and it, yeah. 
Yeah. Once you figured out the way to be able to take him down, you were really able to take him down. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> anyway, so uh, with that, uh, how about we transition into our weekly progress? No games for Dan, I mm-hmm. wanted to give you the option. Uh-oh. Do you want to go first or do yeah. you want to go second? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Because as we've already alluded, <laughs> I've made very little progress. I do have silver armor on everybody. But do, as far as... Hmm? Do we have a slideshow? There is no slideshow. Oh, man! Because as I said <laughs> last week, I will no longer be taking close-up photographs of my minis. Because that was a morale buster, man. Oh. That was bad. No, I will. I will. It's just There's just nothing worth taking pictures of right now. Okay. It's, it's just not... Okay. The progress is not... I only got a couple hours of painting time this last mm. week. It was, mm. it was harsh. Mm. It was harsh. So there's not much to speak of. I do, like I just said, I do have the armor painted on everybody but that's about it i haven't started working on the pauldrons or the details or anything like that so uh, so i can't minimal, use the zero minimal. graphic but we also I mean, you, don't have images you can of... but but it would be uh it would be very ill you know spirited like it'd like, be me like last time it... like last time <laughs> I didn't make zero progress last time, but you chose you chose to be a, a, a little meanie pants about it. So you can choose to do that again if you want. Okay. Okay. So. I'm going to choose to be the better person. It is the holiday ah. time, the holiday season. You're so generous. Uh, so reprieve for December, for okay. sure. For sure. All right. Uh, if Dan does decide to send me any images of the progress he did make, they will be here. If they're not, I'm going to cut this whole part out. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. It, it, so what I think you? well, before we get there, all joking aside, I do think it's really important to kind of celebrate whatever progress gets made because mm-hmm. because the 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 reality of it is everybody's got lives, right? Like work, family, little things that pop up it is it's december there are like mm-hmm. 400 different holidays that happen within these 30 days right it is right. it is a lot and it and it, even things you don't celebrate still take up time and mm-hmm. and can can distract and just be all kinds of whatever yeah so pe- people with kids suddenly have 150 <sighs> christmas recitals and Hanukkah pageants to go mm-hmm. to and mm-hmm. all the rest dance of it. and band and and What's winter the Muslim sports? holiday during this time of year I don't remember I anyway, I am hey are you a yeah. Muslim viewer drop it in the comments what are you celebrating right now yeah it's uh Anyhow. so it's a lot so I think I think yeah. any forward momentum is a win yeah that's a W it's ironic that this happened the exact like the week we were talking about Hobby time, time management. Hobby time, time management, management. Yes. So, yeah. To fail. Anyhow, that's me. not fail. You? you did manage to get some things done. Okay. You did manage to get some things done. And we didn't talk about goals last week. We did not so talk I about goals last week. I didn't have any goals to fail. So I kind of got, uh, I got a freebie there. I got a mulligan. Fair. A bye week. Yeah. For you. Yeah sports ball fans now <laughs> that being said yes um i did get quite a bit done good so okay uh good. so this would be a dead segment if you were had <laughs> if you had the same week i did <laughs> now um i finished my kill team my kill team is now complete so it's Whoa. good, it's done, it's good to go. I don't know if we can use Copyright that music, but if we can, uh, right, exactly. Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Final Fantasy, or is that Super Mario Brothers? That's Final Fantasy. Okay. That's the victory music. Battle, victory, battle, battle, victory music. Yes. Yeah. Well, I definitely... You're thinking, you're thinking of... That is, that is what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 And now we've got a copyright strike from Nintendo. Thanks, Dan. 
Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. They're vicious. They're vicious. Did you hear what they did to Smash Brothers? But that's a whole different video. <laughs> I suggest you go check out Philip DeFanco's uh, thing about it if you want to learn more. But anyway, so I finished my kill team. So I went back to uh, to getting into my pile of shame. Okay. So I am now working. The pile of opportunity. I really prefer the shame part. I need that negative energy that motivates to keep me you? motivating. Yeah. Okay. I, I yeah. understand that. Understand. So I'm that way too. adding adding another uh, another enforcer Ooh, to my uh -huh. veterans. Uh huh. And who's that? Uh, this is Stud. Th is he related to Thud? He is not. Uh, Stud is. Um, he is he is an attractive dude under that helmet. Okay. But you'd never know. Okay. Um, so and... he's he's a uh, um, he moonlights as a uh, calendar model. One hundred percent for the, uh, the for for the Imperium. Yeah. He's part. He's part of the uh, uh, Astra Militarum uh, pinup calendar that they do mm -hmm, every year. Mm -hmm. Men to, of the uh, Underdark. Yep. To raise yep. funds for uh, yeah, Good. for like Imperial orphans. Right. Yeah. Uh, a new good. lieutenant for uh -huh. my Astra Militarum army. Good. Yep. This is Lieutenant Duraf. Duraf, named yep. after Brad. One hundred percent. Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, and then this is his. This is a yeah, Imperial actor, Guard actor bodyguard, bodyguard, Ogren bodyguard. I but like the. Oh, he's an Ogren. He's Ogren. not really. Ogren? He's not really. It's it's uh it's one of the suppressors from Necromunda, but I use them as Bulgrins and Ogrens because oh, okay. uh I just I just think they they've got the same weapons and I think they look cooler with the armor. Yeah, that shield is really neat looking. And then I've got three more that I'm going to use as Bulgrins. Oh, now, okay. tournament players are going to be like, they're not on the right base size, ah, and they're not tall enough, because ah, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, well, they're like half an inch shorter. And that matters because line of sight. Sure. In kill sure. team is matters. Oh, they're not for kill team. They're for 40k. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, you can, there's no yeah. line of sight rules. And in... there is, but it's it's also way more. Uh, uh, what's it called? Not obscure, but uh, uh, abstract. It's also way more abstract. So, okay. like, also, I don't. I play the narrative. You play for the narrative. I play the so. narrative. I'm not. I'm not here to. <laughs> I'm not going to tournaments. I'm not. I'm not here to win okay. your trophies. As um, long as your opponent plays the narrative as well. And exactly. Is, is aware of that situation. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. And so, so, so that's what I've started working on. That's because great. Because I recently finished this. Nice. This is uh. Wow. Uh, the thrice cursed. And so. Wow. Yeah. He's got fire like belly. A hubcap is a kneecap. It's it's knee yeah it's it's like a uh, it's a it's a, like a hatch cover. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hatch cover. Dang, there's a lot going on with this guy. There is a lot going on. He's got three different heads. He's got a heart plug. He's got uh, he's got the oh, yeah, boiler look belly. At that. He's a he's a little Iron Man, right? <laughs> heart plug thing, <laughs> or wow. a Harkonnen, depending on depending on your your fan oh, your fandom. There, that's what it is. Yeah, that's probably the inspiration, huh? I think so. I think so. It even looks like a Dune eighty four. Uh, Harkonnen, uh, Harkonnen, you're saying, not Harkonnen. I I am using the pronunciation is, that uh, the Villeneuve movie says Harkonnen. Uh, actually, I'm using the right? pronunciation that the author. Uh, why can't I remember his name? Frank Herbert. Thank you. Frank Herbert did readings of the book in the '60s. Oh, and he says and Harkonnen. Okay, he says Harkonnen and Atreides. Atreides, not Atreides. A Atreides. Yeah, he pronounces that E that's in there. It's a four-syllable word. Atreides. Atreides. Yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So I'm trying I'm trying to normalize Frank Herbert's pronunciation of his of his creatures. Well, he would know if any of us. Yeah, right? Right? And he had very particular anyway. I except for Shai Halud, which I prefer to pronounce like the guy in the 84 movie. Shai Halud. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer that. But anyway, uh, here's another angle. Uh, he's got so many whoa, drill arms. Whoa, he's got whoa. drill knees. He's got drill arm. How does he see? He's not 
he can't squat down. No, he does not squat. He does not squat. He exists to uh, he exists to stand. What a dangerous person this well, individual I mean, is. He is in a kill to team. himself. To himself, uh, he is he is uh, he is he is Nurgle made. What is the purpose of the drills coming out of the back of the knees? What is um, you don't want anybody sneaking up on you. What's okay? Uh, and and let's not forget he is a product of chaos, and it's pretty chaotic to have yeah drill knees. Yeah, yeah. So here's the back. He's got his pants stitched together. Interestingly, his pants are the most uh, structurally sound of all of the characters you have showed us so far. And he's got he's got ample badonkadonk. Um, <laughs> there is junk inside that trunk. Absolutely, I I won't lie. When I was doing the uh, highlighting on this, I was doing a uh, pretty thin. There are lots of layers to that so that it looks uh -huh. like beat up material. So it's got some texture to it. But as I was doing, it, I was like, Th Thrysker's got some globes, you know, like, <laughs> like Thrysker's is thick. Uh, and so, uh... yeah, yeah, it's happening. It's happening. Uh, all of his areas where the skin is broached by machinery or where it's sewn back together. I tried yeah. to make it look like bruised and infected and just upset. Yeah. No, yeah. it looks it looks good. It's uh it's yes. It reminds me of what I tried to do with my orc knob. Uh, right with the, with the the power, power claw. claw uh, yeah. Surgical, surgical site. Uh I found that that some slightly watered down carrying crimson really really does the job pretty well. Mhm. Mm really does the job pretty well. Uh, and then we've got the big old arm claw here. Yeah. And a shoulder vent because who doesn't want a shoulder vent? Sure, I guess. Yeah. He's got a couple chimneys coming out of his back. Uh, and then we get the uh the close-ups of the heads. So we've got our main head here in the front. And then does he have three eyes? He's got, uh, this one has three eyes, yes. Uh-huh, but the one in the center. The one in the center does not. He's just got the two, but he's got a sensor, like a... Oh, that's what that is. Okay, I yeah. thought he had, like, two two left eyes. It, it, to keep everything um, uniform, all of my Nurgle armies, every Nurgle thing that I make has yellow eyes. So rather than add a splash of color or, like, a green or a red, like, laser finder to anything, she's like... Screw it. Everything's yellow. Okay. So I can see I can see why that would be confusing. Uh, we've got uh, tongue over here, tongue tongue head. Yeah. He's yeah. got an iron jaw too, which was really Ooh. hard to get a good picture of. Mm, okay. Yeah, we've got several failed attempts at that. <laughs> and then we've got this other head where its mouth where his mouth is sewn shut. And oh, I thought those were fangs. No, like no. spiky teeth. Okay, it's it's uh, sewn he's, uh, shut, and then he's the Abe. He's got eye. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and he's got eye uh, bionics that are like crunched into his face. Yeah, they look so, too yeah. big for his eye sockets. Yeah, his ocular yeah. cavity. <laughs> he's also got. Uh, there are pneumatic uh, and hydraulic things throughout the, across the body here yes. as well. Those are a yeah. little bit tougher to see. I, I, I noticed those on your the opposite side view. Oh, right there? Uh, nope. There? Nope. There? I guess maybe it's the back? Boop, boop, boop. Well, let's see. Boop, boop, boop. Where? Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know what I was looking at. Anyhow. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. That is that is Thrice Cursed. Dude, he looks great. Thank you very I like much. The, I like the fire and the, the boiler in the belly. Yeah, it also uh, works. It's an attack. It's an attack. So it works like a flamethrower. Nice. So it can nice. shoot shoot fire out of the belly. You just acid reflux just <laughs> right out right out the center of the belly there. Yes. <laughs> Dang. So well, good job, Curtis. Congratulations on completing your kill team. That's thank you. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Excellent uh, progress. The last thing that I have to do with it which I can't do right now because the temperature is just so cold mm. here in the Pacific Northwest 
is get everything varnished and safe. So uh, yeah. depending on on when we've got our reschedule for playing, I may come down and be like, I need 40 minutes first to <laughs> spray these with some testers dull coat and uh -huh. uh, and then and then we could play. So yeah. Do you have an area you could go that I'm thinking an underground parking garage because those tend to be warm. If you could just drive to there, get your little your your paint box, right? Varnish them and just kind of hang out there. I in wouldn't put the... the box back in the car right away. Right. Well, that's kind of the that thing, too. right? But just yeah. like leave it sitting there and just hang out there. I don't know what you would do, but. I used to, when we lived in the apartment building, um, that's what I used to do in the winter is we actually had uh, a bike parking room that was, uh, there were a couple in the building and this one had a vent in the top okay. to keep it dry and to keep everything going. So I could go under that vent in the winter and spray and it wouldn't linger and it, it, uh, the vent really did its job and mm, good. Like you said, I would just be, I'd tell Renee, hey, I'm going to be gone for about half hour, 40 minutes because I could go down, do a coat, give it 10 minutes to dry, do another coat, and then wait like 20 minutes for it to degas as much as possible and then and then walk it back up. And I'd listen to podcasts. I think I got through several episodes of The Hero's Journey doing that <laughs> over the years. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, support. it's a little tougher to do that here. Because like our garage area doesn't really it's it it's not it's not insulated. It's mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. And um and like this is our house is old, um, which we appreciate for its charm, but what it's really bad at is ventilation. Mm -hmm. So like yeah, there's just there's just no good place. There's no good place. Not not even like a public there's like a mall or somewhere that's got a I live in garage Portland that... and uh Portland is a a world of of small small mom and pop stores. Okay. And we don't really have parking garages. Okay. We don't. There's Lloyd Center, but Lloyd Center is a dead mall with a Suncoast Motion Picture Company. Oh. Wow. It it felt like walking into the 90s every time wow. you're in that mall. Huh. Well, Dan, mm -hmm. we're getting close to the end of the year. Yeah. Next week is Christmas week. Yeah. I know that's a holiday we both celebrate. Uh, we haven't really discussed what the schedule is going to look like for doing shows. I think we might might take the holidays off. So just be aware this may be one of the last episodes that you see before the end of 2022. <laughs> Um, but do you want to try and set goals for next week? Many hours later. Uh, wow. Yeah, that was a, that was a good 10 seconds of silence that you're going to have to trim there. I'm going to just um, pop in the old SpongeBob several hours later. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that would help. Maybe that's why I made so little progress last time because I didn't I didn't have a goal set for myself. So I, I, I was not motivated to complete anything because I didn't have a goal to fail. Nice. Mm, so I think what I need to do now that I kind of have a better have a better idea of the process now that I've worked on Storm and got him to a non close up photo uh state of tabletop readiness minus the basing is to get i don't mm, i don't think i can get well there's 10 models but only 6 are needed for a kill team so i guess i need to say that i'll get like half of what's left to the same place that storm is you want to get your you want to get at your, least half your, uh, of them like my troops ready right uh, right to to the same place that he is at like your starters do you want to get your starting lineup right ready yeah right 
So that means that that we'll get uh, Iolanthus. Well, no, he's a Justicar, so he's he's a main oh. character. He's a character. He's going to take a lot more oh, care. My apologies. I'm talking when, about the troops. Just when so I asked they're... about the starting lineup, I meant like the first like a team ready to go. But you're just you're just troops right now. You're just ready. Want to ready some troops? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Because still, I want to work out the technique, and I I want to do that on troops, not the. The, sh- the title character. I was gonna say the showpiece, but it's not gonna. It ain't gonna be no showpiece the way I paint. But <laughs> that's fair. That's that's what I want to do. I want to get my practice rounds done. Cool. And cool, I cool, feel cool. like I need to go back to episode one and re-review Nelson's suggestions because I think I've lost. I've lost the the way. So mm. I need I need to remind mm. myself what his what his uh, process was because maybe maybe that'll help out help remind me what I need to be doing. Nice. Uh, also, I know we've what talked about, about this done. on on the on the you know internal communications that we have, but have you considered getting something like this? <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Look how would... big. Look how big that that uh, guy is, and he's yeah. he's very small. But the 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 magnification, who boy? Yeah, I tell you yeah. what, it saves my eyes. Yeah, no, it. Uh, I would definitely. I should have done that first. I when I bought a light, I just bought a light. I didn't get a mag light, so I should have done that. Mag light. That's actually a thing. A magnifier light. I like to say magnifying lamp. Yes, that. (laughs) (laughs) For those of you who may be interested in a magnifying lamp, I will send you the same search that I sent Dan on Amazon. Put it in the doobly-doo. It will be in the doobly-doo. It will be in the doobly-doo. Um, we are not affiliates right now. Uh, I've found out that my old affiliate links no longer work because um, apparently I, I didn't post affiliate links for about a year and a half. So yeah, Amazon was like, you. you're not, not an affiliate. Work for them. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, and, and we're produce. not, we're not important enough yet to uh, get that affiliate link back. I just got the confirmation from Amazon today. So, uh, so huh? you, it's just for you. It's just for you. We're doing this for you. There's no monetary gain for us at, at this time for, uh, uh, for when you click on those. Did you contact Amazon and try to establish an affiliate? No, I wanted to see if my no games or no, I just wanted to see if my old affiliate link was still working because, Oh, and they said, sorry, who are you? It kind of, sort of, they were like, no, it's been dead for a while. Um, yeah. Our, uh, our old records have been purged. So we have no idea who you are, (laughs) but good luck to you. Yeah. Kid. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. So mm. goals for me for, for next week. Yeah. Um, there is a possibility that I'm going to play another game of Warhammer 40 K. Oh, Oh really? Yeah. Uh, in, in maybe a week or so, uh, my old neighbor, mm. uh, Joel, who oh. is the only other person I've actually played ninth edition with. Okay. He is in school right now, uh, uh, becoming a lawyer and he is about to wrap up some of his big end of the year tests and he was like I'd really like to see if we can get together and knock out a game post uh, post test schedule mm-hmm. and I was like knock I would also off. I would also like to play a game but the end of the year is a very 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 busy time for us so we'll see what we can do so there's a possibility I don't know yet and in, in that case, what I would really like to do is to have my Bulgrins ready because I really, I really want to beat the snot out of his Gene Stealer cult. I just <laughs> really, really need something that could take on his aberrants. And, and I think that's about it. Is, is your, your, what are they? The Adeptus Arbides? Is yeah. Is that who they are? Yeah. Is that the only 40K fieldable army you have available? i'm still going to be using the old codex because the new codex is not publicly available yet and i'm not going to try and build an army for uh for the new codex just yet so 
I can still use my Necromunda Enforcer models as veterans, which is not in the new codex. Right. So my oh. kill team that I have, plus special weapons that I made for them, will be on the table. Okay. But, uh, but um, and then the Bulgrins are also in there too. But, but it'll, uh, it's an Imperial Guard army. Correct. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Imperial cool. Guard rules, but uh, I mix I mix it up. I got gotcha. you. So the Imperial Guard Codex isn't ready? Is that what you're saying? It's only been released in the big army box. And as much as I appreciate the Astra Militarum and Imperial Guard, um, I am not spending $200 on an army box to get a special edition Codex when I already have... Yeah, there is nothing that I want in that box besides the codex. So I just, I just need the book. I just need the book. And, and games workshop is really into instilling that FOMO and making you wait for the stuff. Cause you know, capitalism, late stage <laughs> capitalism. It's a thing. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All we're right. good. I hope, I hope you guys actually are able to play a game. Yeah, me too. And then me if so, too. you take some pictures and then the episode following that, we uh, get a slideshow. Yeah, maybe, and possibly, you know, maybe that's the filler episode. Maybe I put together a filler episode for the holidays that is just, look at these games played. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 But anyway. Since, since Dan can't figure out how to paint, I've, I've, I've swapped him out for a new co-host. Everybody. Here is the slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> new co-host for Tabletop Tuesday. This guy actually paints. <laughs> Joel is actually like, he is a, a far more like crunch gamer than I am for 40K. Mm. He knows, like we go back and forth on our messaging apps and he'll be like, have you seen this, this, and this? And I'm like, dude, no, I just know the rules for this and this. And he's like, yeah, but if you do this, this, and you synergize with this, it's like, dude, no. I really appreciate the fact that you're giving me this information because I don't know that I would have figured that out on my own. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, it's uh -huh. pretty slick. But anyway, getting back on topic. Sorry. Dan is going to finish the troops, the regular old men of his Grey Knights by next week. And I'm going to try and finish my, my Bulgrin proxies by next week. I didn't say finish. I said get half of them done. You're 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 putting a lot of more pressure on me than I can handle. Dan is going to finish a Grey Knight <laughs> army and come to Portland <laughs> next week. 3000 points. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like 20 models. Uh and uh, <laughs> So, okay. So that's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. That was okay. our weekly progress. Hey. -o. We are all over the place this December. This yes. is happening. This yes. this episode, this is definitely in the minds of Dan and Curtis right now. And since we're talking about all kinds of other things, let's talk about other tabletop things. No games for old the last couple episodes, we've actually stumbled upon the ways that we got into tabletop gaming, specifically like D&D &D in general. But something that I've noticed for everybody who plays any Games Workshop game, especially if you're a mainline 40k player or Age of Sigmar player, is that everybody's got a unique story about what got them into Games Workshop games in the first place. So I thought it might be nice to kind of share our origin stories today. And of course, in the comments down below, we'd love to hear about what got mm. you interested in this. Because... I mean, let's let's call a spade a spade. Up until recently, it's not like Games Workshop tabletop war games were the were like uh, popular. Like to this day, they're still pretty niche. But like in really? the nineties, they're niche. Okay. Yeah, they're definitely getting a lot more mainstream attention now because of just the massive growth that they had. The the Lord of the Rings battle strategy game was a huge game changer. It brought so many people over to everything. 
Really? Okay. But we are gamers of a certain... Actually, this I is think... just a neat little highlight. Games Workshop had its highest profits ever when the Lord of the Rings strategy game was released. And it made them the, like, 100, 100 million pound company they are today. Like, it, it was a massive infusion of capital. It allowed them to redo Warhammer World. They, you know, did all kinds of stuff. They expanded like crazy. Hmm. So, <clears throat> for a lot of people, Lord of the Rings is like... Like, I know Zorba Zorb talks about it very publicly. Um, uh, a bunch of YouTubers actually talk about how they all got started with Lord of the Rings back in the day. But but you and I, yeah, we're of a specific vintage. <laughs> we were born in the 1900s. Uh, 70s babies. Um, yeah. Before the height of disco, you and I fell, fell into the earth. Uh, and... Uh, and at that time, Games Workshop was not the Games Workshop we know today. It was a very it was it was still a still a pretty small thing working out of a garage and and uh, and a store in in London. So, Dan, what what uh, what's your Games Workshop origin story? How did how did you get involved? I think it had to be you. I don't remember knowing anything about it. it. We were, this was early 90s. No, late, mid to late 90s. Because we like were living. 96, 97. We were like, all, the, the four of us were living in that two bedroom apartment. Yeah. Near the college. And that is when we bought the second edition set of Warhammer 40,000. You know what? We it may included... need to back this up then and then have you fill in the tale after the fact because my my story begins in 1994 in high school. I had a buddy named Ian Marr and Ian, if by any chance you have found the channel, hi, good to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> um, and uh, and he and I used to talk about like geeky stuff. Uh, we had several classes together, um, and and so we saw each other quite a bit. We were part of that choir clique because we were all we were in show choir together, and so we just we spent a lot of time together. And he started telling me about this crazy fantasy universe where like. Uh, Electro like technology was a religion and they had all these crazy things and like these these weird genetically modified soldiers and weird armor and uh I, straight up i did not get it for a while like he would tell me about it and i was intrigued by the stories but it didn't it i really didn't understand what he was talking about it took it took me a long time and like a dan abnett novel before i could really wrap my head around how how the 41st millennium worked but he told me about it and he'd show me the models for the games like at his house and stuff and what he was playing he was playing epic which was the six millimeter fighting game That's so so he showed me knights and he showed me how that worked and and the titans and things like that and i was like oh yeah, that's pretty cool that's pretty cool i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but that's just neat now around this time i was getting into D D with all y'all and so my direction was always toward fantasy and those kind of things so the future sci-fi thing i was like that's a whole other thing i don't really want to have to get involved with but then we've got a mutual friend from high school jeff crane mm -hmm. and he used to hang out at old man scott's house all the time yes and i don't remember the order but one time he brought epic yes and we played epic for the first time I'm remembering all of this now. Yes. Okay, okay. That okay. was my moment from two minutes ago. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. So Jeff Crane put an epic battle down, and I was controlling orcs. I was really into that weird boy tower and the gargant that he had. 
Hmm. And I don't remember who the, I think the other, the other side was Eldar. And I remember losing, but having so much fun, like pushing all these little things across the table. <laughs> yeah. And I enjoyed the game a lot, but not enough that I was interested in buying it. Because I remember thinking, I am not going to want to paint those little six millimeter things. Mm -hmm. Like that just, uh, I just have no interest in that. And my understanding of painting at the time was like testers model enamel paints. Oh yeah. With yeah, like yeah, yeah. plastic brushes. So uh, I use it these was, for like was not what glue it is now. now. Yeah. And, and it, you just, you're not painting with that. So that's my mixer brush. <laughs> I, yeah, me too. Me too. I have one of those. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so, I don't remember if it was the first game or the second game he showed us. I think it was the second one. Then he pulled out Space Hulk. Space Hulk. And Space Hulk got me. That one I liked. Space yes, Hulk got me. So uh, Epic felt it was too, it was too uh, it was overwhelming. Yeah. Space yeah. Hulk was smaller, more focused. That one I could grasp right away and really, really, really enjoyed. Yeah. That one. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I remember that was, that's when the hook set in. Yes. And then we got talisman. And I don't even remember talisman as being a games workshop game. I just remember that talisman was something we were like, it's got miniatures and we're going to, we're going to play the board game. I still I love still, that game. I still have talisman. Right. You've got, it's third edition, right? Talisman third edition. Right there. Right up, yeah. right up in that closet. That's right off camera. And that, that's a fun one. That's a fun one. Uh, and, and as a, as just to, to add, uh, uh, extra burned in memories, we were all getting started and painting miniatures at that time. And we were painting like fantasy miniatures and stuff like that. And I remember you pulling out all these talisman dudes. And I was like, oh, I'll help you paint them. And you're like, no, I'm painting them. Ah. And... <laughs> Guess what? I didn't. You did? <laughs> <laughs> There's one or two of them have a little bit of color on them, but I, I, did, I didn't actually end up painting any of them. <laughs> That's our Had project. I left them with you, you would have painted all of them, I'm sure. Right. Although my skills back then were significantly, my powers were, were far less than they are now. <laughs> we yeah. had a lot to learn. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, but uh uh, but yeah, no. And then, and then after that, I remember it wasn't, it was maybe a year after that, that we sunk into the second edition box set Yeah, and I, actually started getting into the game. I don't remember how that even, how that even happened. Were you, were you working at all-star games at the time? No, this was before then. This was when oh, wow, I was on okay. TV on the regular and working at Disneyland and so how did Scott, we even how did the conversation even start with let's buy the box? Was it brand new and therefore it was not like... new. It was not new, but, um, hmm. but we were, we were just, I remember we started looking at the codexes. We were young and impulsive. Game Castle. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. And you kind of have to be, if you're going to decide to sink into the, uh, even back in the nineties, it was an investment to get involved. I would gladly pay those prices now, but it was an investment. It was relative. <laughs> it was relative. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Scott and I were 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 like loaded for bear when it came to cash, and so it was just like, well, oh, let's let's get into this game. Let's get into this game. I'm gonna buy an army box. Yeah, let's do that. And so we went to, uh, uh, what's it called? Is it Game Castle? No, it was uh, Brookhurst Hobbies. Brookhurst Hobbies. Okay. That's right. Brookhurst Hobbies in Westminster. And uh, and we got the box set mm -hmm. that we were going to split. And we got, I bought the Ultramarine Space Marine Army box. Oh, you did? Uh-huh. That as well? Uh-huh. Which at the you... time was only $400 for what 
t- would turn into like 2,500, 3,000 points. Wow. It was a lot. And it was metal. Not a lot of plastic back then. It Dang. was a lot of metal. And uh, and Scott got the the Tyranid army box at the time. Yep. And I still have some of those some of those things. I actually had to buy some replacements because I sold that army. <laughs> but um, but I got I got uh, yeah yeah it was that was it that was that was the dunk in. Dang. Yeah. Wow, how did I end up with the orcs then? Did I, did I I had to have pitched in on that that box, didn't I? Or I'm sure you did. Yeah. Cuz I ended up with the orcs out of that box set and mm-hmm. that was But I don't think you bought the army box. I think you just no. got uh uh No, got... I just bought little you know, I bought a little box of the bikers and I bought yeah. a little box of that yeah, blister pack of a weird boy and stuff like that yeah well you were smarter scott and i bought those two giant boxes yeah and then (laughs) i was impulsive but i just didn't have the money that you guys had it took forever to put all that stuff even just putting it together was a mess Mm -hmm. that took Mm -hmm. forever and then heaven forbid we paint it i look back on i still have pictures maybe i'll put some in here i don't know we'll see how embarrassed i am (laughs) when i look back on them how brave you are yeah because you know (laughs) Like at the time, I felt like, well, this is pretty good. And now I look back on them, I'm like, oh, good God. This is a mess. This is a mess. I just had no patience. I had no patience and I had no technique. Mm. I just had, I just had a couple, I had a couple brushes and I just. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't know to thin your paints. So like everything was just globby. At the same time, the paints that we were using were the old, old, old ones that were really, really thin. So it wasn't even a matter of two thin coats. It was like 12 thin coats <laughs> and you could use it right out of the bottle and it would still be mm-hmm. super, super thin. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Jeez. And, na- and now here we are. Yeah. Now here we are. Eight editions later, several sub games and, uh, and uh, we've turned it into a, a weekly talking heads youtube show <laughs> there you go no regrets no regrets no regrets <laughs> so how about you how did you end up in uh in this hobby what what got you grabbed on and stuck in and maybe it's not even games workshop maybe you're you're a, a malifo player or a battletech player apparently battletech is getting a new edition that's going to be kickstarted next year at, at adepticon uh of maybe the tabletop game the tabletop game from Whoa, catalyst really yeah. yeah okay uh yeah what's what's are you conquest player are you getting down with with that game now like there are so many options infinity um crisis protocol i know a lot of folks are really into star wars legion like was it was it what what got you going did you see the movies and you're like i need to have this let us know down in the comments. We want to have that conversation. Where are Mordheim players at? Mordheim! <laughs> and that, for this week, my friends, is other tabletop things. I'm excited about our next segment, so let's just jump right to it. No games for Dan? Uh-huh. I got some things to be hyped about this week. Good. So, first of all, first of all, well, it's not something that we advertise or even something I even thought of. We have had someone reach out from the audience and ask for some commission painting. And so... Oh, great. I'm going to be doing my first commission work. Are you? I am. I am. We're working everything out right now. It is for, oddly enough... A Mordheim game that is coming uh, up. So I'm going to do a Mordheim war band for, uh, for a friend of the channel. And, uh, and wow. I'm, I, this is the first time that I'm going to be, actually, that's not true. It's the second time I'm going to be painting something for somebody else. Is what's, okay, what war band is it? It is a uh, Dark Elf. Oh. 
Yeah. So That's fun, new to you. Fun armor mm-hmm. and fun weapons. Uh, I think he's going to be equipping them with poison. So I will be able to use things like Nurgle's Rot, which, as we all know, I'm a fan of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what's really neat is, and I don't want to I don't want to uh, just directly out him here on the show, but I think it's really important or it's, it's cool to mention the fact that uh, he's a teacher and he's working with students and he's helping to uh, build an interest in the hobby with them. And okay. so showing them gaming, how that helps with mathematics, reading, comprehension, all that stuff, and uh, strategy. And so he's building these war bands so that the kids have stuff that's ready to go. They're going to do a Mordheim campaign uh, as part of like their after school program. So that's I'm really, really excited about that's that. That's a really neat idea. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, the last time I did any kind of commission painting for anyone, it was actually for a gaming convention. And me and a couple folks over at All Star did a series of miniatures that were going to be used to help, like, starter characters so that players could come up to the booth and uh, just learn how to do it. And so I'm pretty excited that uh, that basically any kind of commission work that I do is to help kind of evangelize and and promote (laughs) people getting involved in the hobby and so that's that's fun yeah that's neat so when do you get your hands on these when you start uh we're working that out right now um i actually thought i was going to have them uh this week but i don't think i don't think he's had a chance to finish putting everything together and getting them boxed up and sent out so maybe maybe right before christmas maybe i don't know okay i don't know and what's your deadline after Christmas, <laughs> so you don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. But I Again, know that details uh, still being worked out. Okay, they're I still being thought... worked out. But uh, but uh, based on on what he's looking for, it's gonna be, it's it's not gonna be a super involved like this is not gonna be months of work. This is gonna be we're we're getting things ready to play on the table. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're making game pieces, not show pieces. So. And Mordheim war bands are like kill team size. You got Correct. you know half yeah. a dozen, half a dozen to a dozen miniatures that you're not putting together a fifteen hundred point forty k army totally with a hundred miniatures. Yeah, or three hundred if you're an orcs player. Right. <laughs> oh, so you're only playing like uh, seven fifty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's great. I hope you will share photos of them uh, here with us. If oh, I absolutely can, unless there's like a, an NDA that you're yeah. I don't. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, no, I'm going to be happy to show these off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then and then okay. depending because on... I will. Uh, you'll need something to show off while I'm still working my way through my gray knights. Gray knights. Think, <laughs> okay, well, uh, since you're still working on those, well, here's the fourth kill team that I've painted since you've started your gray knights. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, there was I just a want you to have. Some, I just me. want you to have something to do. That's all. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, there was a snarky part of me that when I when I finished this kill team, I was like, do I do I want to start another kill team just to be like, hey, hey, Dan, this is, I'm gonna do this. With... But I thought I why not I thought better I thought better. Why not? It. You have. I, re- I really want to finish my pile of shame. Is why to be honest. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. So you're. you're, you're I really want to get using... things done. You are using your time wisely. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Not vindictively. I'm actually getting things done. Right. No, it's yeah. great. Yeah. That's great. But I also have a bonus. I have a bonus thing that I'm hyped about this week. Oh, okay. I have a bonus thing. I found out today that I won a prize from Games Workshop. A major award? A major award. What did you get? Okay. So they're doing a thing right now where if you're subscribed to the newsletter, you were in a drawing for a giveaway for the winter. And uh, one of the prizes was everything they produced in 2022. Another one of the prizes was everything they're going to produce in 2023. Uh Uh-huh. And another prize was a gift voucher. <laughs> I won the gift voucher. <laughs> you 
<laughs> that was a hell of a setup. That was a hell of a setup. Well, how much is the gift voucher for? Uh, uh, 20 pounds or, or local equivalent. <laughs> okay. So it's going to be like 25, 30 bucks. Hey, it's not nothing. No, it's not. It's not nothing. It's there not. are hundreds it's... of thousands of people who didn't win squat from that Absolutely. drawing. Absolutely. You, Absolutely. You and two other people are like, yes. And, and it was a surprise to me uh -huh. uh, because I, you know, like I didn't have to do anything. I'm already subscribed to the newsletter. It's yeah. just, just all of a sudden it showed up. Dude. So, yeah. Dude. Everything they made in 2022, like everything. Everything. Across all lines. Across all lines. Just one of everything. Just one of everything. What would you do with all that stuff? You would, would start a new it. YouTube channel. I, well, and you would say, here's. Here we go. We're going to paint everything that War that Games Workshop released last year. I would year. not do that. I would oh God. <laughs> keep, keep hitting my desk. Uh, I would have a very prolific uh, eBay my head, so uh, I don't... Uh, account is what I would have. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because would... there is. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of uh -huh. stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't mind having the Ash Waste box. The Horus Heresy box. Yeah. Like, there'd be a lot of things that I'd be happy to keep. Yeah. I'd have all the box sets of Zelda. Anyway, the point is, I got 30 bucks. So, um... So, what are you, so, you going to spend it on? I don't know. I don't know yet. But it'll be something. <laughs> it'll be something around $30. And you will share that with all of us here when on I actually show. do it. Yeah. When it arrives. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. What are you hyped well, about, bud? Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I had to pick a new thing to be hyped about this week because the thing that I was originally hyped about, I realized, would expose my new GURPS character to, <laughs> oh. which you already know what it is, Yes. but the other people that we're playing with don't know what it is. And it's kind and, of important that it's a secret. And if they're watching this, I don't want to expose that ahead of time. So I was like, oh man, well, I can't. I can't do that then. Can you expose why but... you're hyped about it? No. Oh crap. No. Okay. I mean the whole but the whole point about about being hyped about it is is why. So Okay. Um but what I have also been hyped about this week in addition to that is and I feel like the last couple of weeks the things I've been hyped about have been very personal and not things that are like uh, I don't know, like when we talk about a game or something, mm. then other people mm. are like, oh, yeah, that's a cool game. Or I've never heard of that game. And then they go look it up. Mm. And then they suddenly find this new game that they that they totally dig. Uh, but maybe there are some other DaVinci Resolve users out there mm. okay, who are like me in the early stages of editing or, you know, feel like they're they're They have maybe intermediate digital editing skills. I have been watching a YouTuber uh, named Casey Ferris, and he mm. is a DaVinci Resolve tutorial video guy. And I, I really like his videos. He's a really, he's an affable dude. Um, really, really pleasant videos to watch. But this week, I discovered a new guy named Mr. Alex Tech. Okay. And he also does DaVinci Resolve videos. And the th what I like about them is that they'll sometimes they'll show the same feature, but in different ways. Mm, like mm. they use them differently, perhaps. And I just I've just learned so much about this one feature just by watching these two uh, teachers and how they use them. And that just gets me fired up because then I'm like, okay, nice. I, as soon as that video is over, I close YouTube and I open up DaVinci Resolve and I'm like pulling up our next episode of a vampire or mech warrior. And I'm like, how can I use that in this video? Nice. Like the video I, I just edited, I did, I did a, a thing that, that Mr. Alex tech, just uh, a video I just watched of his. I'm like, I can use that because I need to use that <laughs> because I've got an awkward moment that I need to transition from. And that would be the perfect way to do it. And nice. It works. I think it worked out. So I, that's, what, like learning stuff like that really gets me fired up. And nice. when, when I have been editing, we started this 
a year ago. Yeah. I can't remember when we... When did we launch the channel, the sign up for our YouTube channel? I can't remember. Anyway, I'm not going to look it up right now. I think, I think it was actually January 2022. But it was... Anyhow, point is, it's been the, a year. The, the yeah, the thing is, we've it's been a year. We recorded that very first XCOM, yes, Newfoundland mission with yes. with you and me, and that. I, so I've been learning DaVinci Resolve since then. So it's been a year. I feel like my my ability. I've I know what I'm doing up to a point, but there's mm. so much more in DaVinci Resolve that it's even the free version is so powerful there's so much in it that i could use but i just either don't know it's there or it's something that i can't conceive of when or why i would use a certain thing mm. but then i'll see casey ferris or mr alex tech um jason yadlovsky if you want audio he's he's good too uh but these guys they all they'll shoot they'll display show something like a you know a 10 minute video and they're like here's 10 things you can do in davinci resolve and i'm just like blown away the whole time i'm like oh my god oh my god and it just gets me fired up again because i'll feel like my 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 editing ability is stagnant i'm like oh I'll just, right i'm doing the same thing over and over again like you can't like how many times how many different ways can you spice up a, a video of vampire or something but <laughs> but it's it's not quite spicing up it's just improving the visual quality of the video. I'm not right. talking about adding sparkles and, and flashy transitions all the time. I'm talking about using these things in a reasonable way to make the video look more professional. If, if you That's notice what it, I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's if, working if you don't notice it. Ex precisely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, things are looking yeah, pretty. So that's clean, what I'm dude. talking about. Uh, that's that's fair. I mean, like I said, I was recently reviewing season one, just just to kind of go back and check things out again. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, dude, your your editing on on recent game videos has really come a long way. Has really come a long way in a short time. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. I also have a bonus item. And this is one that you introduced me to. Oh, what did I do? Jordan Sorcery. Oh, yeah. New. I think he's been around a month or two, maybe? A month or two. And month. he's already he's already passed us in subs. It's he's, ridiculous. He's already got he's already got <laughs> half a million subs. Man. <laughs> Three of our, our five cards for this episode are gonna be Pointing people to other YouTubers that are doing better than YouTubers. we are. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but we're we're all about giving credit where credits due. Okay, absolutely. So, so Jordan Sorcery is a he's a new games lore YouTuber. So he talked about uh, his first video was about cats in Warhammer mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. Games Workshop history, and uh, just this morning while I was. Uh, drinking my morning coffee, I watched his uh, part one of the history of Warhammer Quest. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good series. And yeah. uh, what I like about what, what I like about it, and I think maybe you'll notice uh, my my sweater today. Your professorial sweater, yes. In, in homage to Jordan Sorcery, because he wears these in every video I've seen of him do so far. And when, when you showed me his, the first video. I don't remember which one it was. It was anyway, the uh, Emperor's Tarot. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And it, so you linked that. And I was like, I dig his community college professor chic look. Yeah. You know, because he's got, he's got this big, uh, he's got this big like Ed Greenwood beard. And uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's like, and he's really, he's really pleasant. Yeah. He's just like really pleasant to listen to. He's got a to. really got nice vocal timber. Voice. Exactly. Yeah. His vocal timber is great. But he's just great to listen to, and his 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 set. I mean, it's, he's just he's probably in uh, his room or something. But the way he has created his background is just, all of it is just so like he has he put in a lot of work before turning the camera on. Yeah, unlike me, who was like, I don't know, 
on. Uh, I guess I'll play some video games now and worry about it the rest of it later. Right. Uh, well, as <laughs> and just you know, Jordan, congrats. Um, you, you're you're doing you're doing great work, and it's ob it's obvious the the effort that you put into your videos. And uh, you guys should go check them out. Jordan Sorcery. Curtis Link doobly do. We're gonna we're gonna put uh, we're gonna have cards for everybody yeah. that's on YouTube yeah. here on the show. So and just check out the eye. That if there's anybody who is happens to be watching this and isn't aware of Jordan Sorcery, he's in this wheelhouse because we talk a lot about Warhammer here. That's what he does. He is a Warhammer Games Workshop lorist. Like much like uh, Arbor like, Ian, like he's Arbiter doing the research. Ian. Yeah, he's telling a story. He's doing the thing. We uh, we tell, we keep it we keep it pretty personal. They actually cover the wider breadth of uh, of uh, of the company and, and its their, history. Their style is more documentarian. Yeah, where they're actually producing like an episode of, but you know what we're we're just we're more podcast style, right? Um, right talking head podcast style because a lot of podcasts are very documentarian as well but that's not our style that's in case in case you've been watching but, for months and now are just getting <laughs> we're confused about uh, how this is working. i'm just talking it out in my head i'm not explaining to anybody who doesn't already know i could trim it <laughs> i could trim it. this this is a short this <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a short? Yeah. <laughs> ah, well, that's, that's what pretty I've been great. hyped about this week. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. That's awesome. That well, Dan, look at this. Look at what we did. Episode seven in the can. In the can. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We've got some strong goals for next week. You're gonna get your you're gonna mm -hmm. get uh, your troops ready for uh, for your gray yep. knights. Every uh, single I'm one. Try to get some bulgrins done, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Next, ne okay, we are definitely gonna record next week, and okay. then we'll see what happens for the holidays. But, I mean, it's uh, on my calendar. You yeah. you sent an invitation, but it's not Christmas Day, and we are nothing. I'm not, not going professional. anywhere. Yeah, I'm not I know going me anywhere. either. Yeah. Who the news does anymore? not stop, Curtis. No, it does not. It does not. All right, Don party Lemon's people. taking the day off. No, uh, Don yeah, Lemon I do will actually. Be on, I think I think they're going to have his his uh, understudy. Is that what they call him? Understudy. <laughs> they call are they are uh, they understudies in the news? I don't know. I don't know. Sub. I don't know. What do you do know. for that? Anyway. Uh, don't forget to go down to the comments. Let us know what you thought about anything that we talked about today. I know that uh, uh, I feel like this was one of our most conversational episodes. So we want to converse with you as well. Don't forget to watch Mech Warrior Monday uh, and uh, also catch up with Vampire as we're we're playing it out through the rest of the week. And I hope you've been enjoying the live chats that we've been having on Mech Warrior Monday. I know that we've been having a ball doing yeah, them. Yeah, I'm and glad we've started doing that. Should we do that every... I think so. I think as long as it's a co-op episode, it's worth doing. It's going to be a lot. Come, come watch Jeff get caught on a rock again. It's a good time. <laughs> and uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And Poor we'll Jeff. see you next week. Oh. Bye. Bye. <laughs>